In the next two videos in the Science of Alloderm series, we're going to look at the many different ways an acellular dermal matrix, or ADM, can be produced. In this video, we'll focus on how alloderm is carefully processed to balance sterility and regenerative properties. Alloderm regenerative tissue matrix is intended to be used for repair or replacement of damaged or inadequate integumental tissue or for other homologous uses of human integument. Native biologic tissue contains the ideal scaffold to support the regenerative process, which, as you'll recall from our first video, should be the goal in surgical wound healing. When we process biologic tissue to make an ADM, we do so with two distinct goals in mind. The first goal is to decellularize the matrix to remove antigenic and immunogenic components. This helps to minimize the inflammatory response upon implantation. The second goal is to preserve critical biochemical and biomechanical properties of the extracellular matrix, or ECM. Components like fibrillar collagen, elastin, and vascular channels promote constructive remodeling. If they are damaged, the implant could be recognized as a foreign body, triggering an inflammatory response we're trying to avoid. When selecting an ADM, there are three key variables to consider. Different combinations of these variables will yield very different matrices with very different functional properties. The first of these factors is the source material, which can include allogeneic and xenogeneic tissues, as well as dermal and non-dermal options. Next, a variety of processes can be used to decellularize and preserve the ECM. Some of these methods, such as the use of caustic or denaturing reagents, crosslinkers, and ethanol storage can harm the structural and biochemical integrity of the matrix. The final factor that can affect the properties of an ADM is the sterilization method. This too can vary greatly from aseptic handling to high-dose gamma irradiation. The key takeaway here is that with so many different types of surgical scaffolds available, it's important to understand that all the various combinations of materials, processes, and sterilization methods will yield ADMs with different structural and functional properties. And this can lead to different results when implanted in the body. So how can we maximize the chance that an ADM will give us the desired properties and function? Allergan Aesthetics has over 25 years of experience in regenerative medicine. Our proprietary life cell tissue process uses what we found to be the optimal combination of source material, processing regimen, and sterilization procedure to ensure an intact, non-denatured, non-cross-linked ADM that preclinical studies show will be positively recognized by the body. This process helps alloderm balance sterility with the functional characteristics that support regeneration. Let's take a closer look at the life cell tissue process that gives alloderm its unique properties. First, the adipose layer of the tissue is removed. This is done mechanically, without the use of chemicals that could potentially damage the matrix. Next, solution processing begins. Because the epidermis is extremely cellular and antigenic, most of it is removed from the dermal tissue through a buffered salt solution wash. This gentle process does not remove the basement membrane. Any cellular components that remain in the dermal layer after the epidermis is removed are then also removed during a subsequent gentle solubilization step. The remaining undamaged tissue is preserved for packaging, sterilization, and storage. We place the tissue into a radioprotectant preservation solution to maintain hydration and protect the tissue during the final step, sterilization. Our low-dose electron beam sterilization process was extensively tested to optimize both the method and dose in order to maintain tissue integrity. Remember the two main goals of ADM processing that we talked about at the beginning of this video? Here's histologic evidence that shows they've been achieved in benchtop testing. First, in the native human skin on the left, the brown staining indicates the presence of cellular material. But we don't see any positive brown staining in the alloderm sample on the right, proof that the life cell tissue process effectively removes cellular material. The lower pair of images shows that the structure of the native dermis has been maintained following the life cell tissue process, resulting in alloderm, an intact acellular dermal matrix. It took a significant amount of time and effort to determine a sterilization dose that would give us the optimal balance of regeneration and sterility. 
These histologic images from a preclinical animal study compare the results of different irradiation doses after one month implantation. We see some dose-dependent differences pretty clearly. Lower dose sterilization, specifically the E-beam irradiation used to terminally sterilize Eloderm, maintained the native dermal architecture and consistent host fibroblast infiltration, indicative of regeneration. But as the doses get higher, we see a noticeable change in dermal morphology, as well as a decrease in fibroblast cell infiltration into the matrix. So we see in these preclinical studies that, as the sterilization dose increases, the host response becomes poorer. In summary, the carefully selected tissue process and sterilization steps used to produce Alloderm RTM create the optimal balance of sterility and regeneration. We get the regenerative properties we're looking for, including preservation of the intact matrix and minimal inflammation without degradation, encapsulation, or scarring, as well as the benefit of vascularization, all of which support transition into host tissue. On the other side, Eloderm has been terminally sterilized while maintaining the matrix properties that support regeneration. And because it has been implanted over three million times to date, with no documented cases of disease transmission, you can use Alloderm with confidence. Now that we've seen that Alloderm is processed in a way that supports regeneration by maintaining important matrix properties, the next video will explore some of the ways an ADM can be damaged during processing, leading to suboptimal in vivo performance as shown in preclinical studies.